Hello everyone and welcome back to our channel. Today, as you can see, we'd like to talk to you about dog harnesses. There are so many different types of harnesses and choosing the perfect one for your dog may not be as easy as it seems. It's always good to know what you need the harness for. Do you need it for everyday walks? Maybe for hiking in the mountains or even running with your dog? Or maybe you just want to stop your dog from pulling on the leash? So if you're choosing a harness, for your dog or you're just interested in learning about dog harnesses you've come to the right place we're going to be covering several questions such as what are the three main types of harnesses which type of harness is best for your dog how a good harness should fit your dog how to measure your dog for a harness and in the end we're going to be talking about no pull harnesses so let's dive in we're gonna have a look at the three main types of harnesses. The first type is the so-called Roman harness, also called Y-shaped harness, and I'll explain in a minute why. And this type of harness can be divided into two separate groups, short harnesses for everyday walks, hikes, or even protection sports, and long ones for sports like canny cross, bike joring, ski joring, or even sled pulling. Then the second type is the so-called Norwegian harness. These harnesses have a strap across a dog's chest and often they have a handle on top. And the third type is a step-in harness. You just unbuckle this harness and lay it on the ground, your dog steps into it and a single buckle attaches behind the dog's front legs. So these are the three main types. Now, I'd like to focus on the difference between the first two types. Let me show you what the Roman style harness looks like on a dog. Please excuse my drawing. I know a three-year-old could do it better than me. But anyway, this is what it looks like from the front. It's sort of like the letter Y. That's why these harnesses are also sometimes called Y-shaped harnesses or Y harnesses. And the other one, the Norwegian type, looks more like this. They have a strap across a dog's chest like this. I'm going to show you a series of pictures where on the left you can see the Y-shaped harness and on the right you can see the Norwegian harness with the chest strap. And this difference is very important for a dog's movement. Okay, now take a look at these two pictures of a dog's skeleton and notice the dog's shoulder blade. In the first picture, the shoulder blade is free. And in the second picture, the chest strap goes right across the shoulder blade. Uh, on the left, you've got the Roman type and on the right, you've got the Norwegian type. And why is this important? Well, it's because the pivot point of the canine front limb is located in the upper part of the shoulder blade, which means that it's where the movement of a dog's front legs starts. For comparison, it is in the shoulder joint for humans. So during forward movement, a harness with a horizontal strap is similarly restrictive for the dog as a rubber band around your upper arms. So imagine somebody put a rubber band around your upper arms and told you maybe to go and cook dinner. It would be quite hard. The physiological movement is inhibited in the dog, just as a rubber band inhibits our physiological arm movement. And if the chest strap slides a little higher on the dog, it can put pressure on the dog's trachea and cause wheezing or even coughing. In this video, you can compare this dog walking in a Norwegian style harness on the left and a Roman or Y-shaped harness on the right. Notice how restricted the range of motion is with the first harness. The steps are much shorter and the position of the dog's head is not in its natural walking position because the chest strap doesn't allow the dog to rest his head. And also the tail is down and tight to the body in order to balance the higher head position. But here we have a video that shows that not all Roman style harnesses are good for dogs if they're not the right fit for your dog or as it is in this case the front part of the harness sits too high and the dog cannot lower his head to its natural position. So the question is how do you know that a harness fits your dog well? 
For that, you need to look out for a couple of things. First, it's important to know that the harness should rest on the dog's skeleton, not on soft tissue. Uh, the front of the harness shouldn't go higher than the chest bone. The top of the harness should rest on the withers. The shoulder blade should be free to move. The girth strap should rest at least two to three fingers away from the elbow. This is to avoid rubbing or chafing. And at the same time, it shouldn't go further than to the last true rib. A true rib is a rib that is attached directly to the breastbone. And you should always use the two finger rule, which means that you should be able to fit two fingers between the strap and your dog's fur without having to force your fingers through and without excessive wiggle room too. And then if you have a harness like that, your dog will feel comfortable, his movement won't be restricted, and you can use this harness for everyday walks, for hiking, protection sports, tracking, basically anything. And especially with growing puppies, it's essential that their movement isn't restricted in any way because it could affect their growing bones and joints. All of my sources will be linked down below. So if you're interested in learning more about this, just take a look in the description. Okay, this brings us to another question and that is how to measure your dog for a harness. For that, you're going to need a soft measuring tape and you need to measure the lower part of your dog's neck and sometimes also your dog's chest girth, which means you should measure the largest part of your dog's body just behind the front legs by wrapping the tape measure around their chest. It always depends on the manufacturer's instructions and size charts, so always check those before you measure your dog. My two personal favorites are the Herta padded Y harness and the non-stop line harness. I'll leave a link to both of them in the description below. We're not sponsored by any of the companies. I just genuinely like them. I, and I think these harnesses are good and they don't restrict your dog. Obviously, some dogs' bodies are very, very different. So for those dogs, you may need a custom fit harness. And if you do want to do sports with your dogs, such as canny cross, bike joring, ski joring, or scootering, your best choice is a long harness together with a bungee leash. A bungee leash reduces strain on both you and your dog, and the long harness distributes the pull force around the upper body of your dog. And these harnesses are designed specifically for pulling. They have to have good padding, they have to allow the dog's shoulders to move freely and they also need to leave the airwaves unrestricted. But with these harnesses, it's essential that you get your dog a well-fitting model. Uh, we use this non-stop combined harness and we are very happy with it. Rancho has never had problems with wheezing or coughing in it, even when he was pulling really hard. Again, we're not sponsored by this brand, but we really do like their products and we'll leave a link to this harness in the description too. Okay, now let's take a look at the step-in harnesses. There's a lot of different varieties within this group. Some of them have a strap across the chest, some of them have a more Y-shaped front. Um, the biggest advantage I'd say is their lightweight and the fact that they're easy to put on. Their disadvantages include the fact that their straps are very narrow, usually with no padding, and therefore they can dig into your dog's skin and cause chafing. Also, often the strap behind the elbow may cut into the armpit because it's too close behind the elbow. And there are a lot of unpadded buckles that can be very uncomfortable. You should always imagine yourself carrying a backpack with uh, similar straps and with buckles on your shoulders, you know, you'd probably be able to carry such a backpack for half an hour and then you'd just be very uncomfortable and you'd have to take it down. It's the same for your dog. The, the problem is that they just don't tell you that they're in pain or they're uncomfortable. So this kind of harness may be good for short walks with dogs that don't pull on the leash, but for longer hikes, a well-fitting Roman-style harness uh, with good padding is a much better choice. 
Now the last part of our video is about no pull harnesses. No pull harnesses have a clip at the front in contrast to the to the more traditional harnesses that usually clip on at the back. They are supposed to minimize your dog's ability to tug hard on the leash during walks. As you can see it does work, it stops the dog from pulling, although you have to forget about correct biomechanics here and you maybe should focus on uh, trying to teach your dog not to pull as fast as you can. And there was actually a study into these harnesses by Dr. Zink and it observed that dogs that wear front clip harnesses bore less weight on their front legs than they normally would, even when the harness wasn't attached to a leash, which is interesting. And in all cases, the gait of the front limbs was altered whenever the harness was used. Normally, a dog uh, carries about 60% of his weight on his front legs and about 40% on his back legs. But these harnesses altered these proportions. I'll leave a link to the study in the description. So with all this in mind, we can say that these harnesses may be a good tool to teach your dog not to pull. And after they have learned that, you should stop using them. Now, I understand that in some cases, people don't have the time or the resources to deal with this issue. And for them, this kind of harness may be very beneficial, even at the expense of their dog's health. Because especially with big, powerful dogs, it's important to have them under control. But again, for growing puppies, no pull harnesses are highly unsuitable. And also never use this harness for running with your dog. Okay, so this is all for our video today. Thank you so much for watching. I know there was a lot of information. I hope everything was clear. If you have any questions, please ask us in the comments below. We'll be happy to answer. If you like the video, please hit the like button. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. And we will see you in our next video. Bye.